The gospel genre argument starts by classifying the literary genre of the gospels. This is done by comparing their structure and content with other ancient writings without making external reference to the truth of their claims. Various genres of ancient literature can be identified, including myth, history, satire and biography. The argument goes that the genre that the Gospels fit best is ancient biography, and specifically they do not fit the genre of ancient myth at all well. C.S. Lewis is usually cited when this argument is presented. He saw himself as an expert on ancient myth, having read hundreds of them, and said that anyone with such experience can see that the Gospels are not myth. If you accept the genre classification, then this claim is certainly true. The Gospels read very differently from ancient myths in that they are about people who are said to have existed on Earth and were located geographically on Earth and in a specific historical period, none of which are characteristic features of myths, which tend not to be dated to a specific period and involve much activity in the heavens or underworld rather than located in geographical space. Furthermore, myths generally involve interactions between multiple supernatural beings who frequently have the ability to appear in human form, rather than people with supernatural powers as appear in the Gospels. So the next step in the Gospel genre argument is to assert that the motivation and therefore the intention of ancient biographers was to recount key events in the life of their subjects, not necessarily in chronological order and often grouped by theme rather than by time period, but nevertheless to recount events that took place on earth in time and space. We would therefore assume that the biographical details recounted in the Gospels actually took place. This is a silly argument and it's very easy to dismiss. The most obvious counter is that the Gospels don't form into the genre of historical biography, but into the genre of Gospels. Gospels are very different from both historical biography and myth. Their intention is not to present key events in the life of an individual, but rather to promote spiritual or religious beliefs using a historical and temporal setting as a vehicle for those beliefs. As such, Gospel writers did not have the same motivation as biographers, and therefore their intentions and the literal truth of what they wrote cannot be inferred by crediting them with biographers' motivations. A second counter is that even if it is accepted that the Gospels are ancient biography, classifying the literary genre of a piece of writing does not establish its truth. Establishing the genre does not establish that the writers of the Gospels were careful and critical historical biographers. The genre could as easily have been employed by writers who were sincere but mistaken, or who had deliberate intent to deceive. A third objection is that the argument obviously fails with many of the claims of the Gospels. We have to be careful not to let this debate stray into the triumphal versus minimal historicity area, and stick with mythicism versus minimal historicity. In that case, Jesus was not born of a virgin, he did not walk on water, he did not raise the dead, and he was not resurrected himself. Therefore, a lot of the gospel content cannot be accurate, so the genre argument fails at least in places. If it fails in some places, it's rather arbitrary to assume that it doesn't fail in others. So the gospel genre argument is a particularly weak one, but one that is widely cited. The reason is that it is a blanket argument for the literal truth of the gospels, making it a favourite of Christian apologists. I have yet to hear it used by minimal historicists. This is analogous with the Bethlehem argument, which is also a weak one, used by minimal historicists, not because of its strength in favouring historicity, but because it also implies rejection of triumphal historicity. Not surprisingly, I have yet to hear the Bethlehem argument advanced by Christian apologists or triumphal historicists. Christian apologists often use the gospel genre and silence of Jesus arguments together to defend historicity. While these arguments are both weak, it is important not to dismiss people just because they are apologists. A case should be considered on its merits alone and not because of who's making it. Apologists did, after all, provide us with the powerful onomastic argument. What I find surprising is that this last one is so infrequently used by them.